over here at D-Lab, and behind me, I have a Black Cat Cougar 50 combo lamp. This is the first of its type that I've worked on. This one has a strange problem. Let me show you what it's doing. The amp is up and idling. I'm in the clean channel mode. I've turned up the volume. You hear a little bit of white noise, right? Like you should. Now I'm going to go over to the lead channel. Immediately, I have hum, even with the gain all the way down. Now if I take the master, it should go away. But if I bring that back up, there's this hum. Now watch this. Put my hand there. It increases. So I suspect we've got some bad connections or this gain pod is busted. We're going to take it apart and see what we find. So as usual, I take the chassis out of the amp and the problem goes away. That's always the case, isn't it? So I thought, well, let's get some brain juice going. Let's think about this a little bit. First off, it sure can't be a bad pot, like I thought, because the problem's gone, right? So what could have changed when I pulled that chassis out of the cabinet and set it on my bench? I'm going with bad solder connections. So, first let me show you what's inside of this thing, and unfortunately it's a circuit board monster. Then we'll get a scope on it and see if we can find that intermittent connection causing the weird noise. Here we go. So here we are, the old Fat Cat Cougar 50. Got a tour of the inside. Two circus boards there. One circus board on the rear. Joined together with some lovely cables here. And these things are notorious. If you look at that one, you can see it's kind of out. Right? They do that. Let's fire it up, put a scope on it, and see if I can reproduce that fault. So here we are, I have a little test speaker hooked up. In parallel, I have my oscilloscope hooked up. So we'll fire it up, let it warm up. Over here is my Iwatsu scope that we'll be monitoring the speaker output with. Then I'm gonna take this trusty tapping tool and we'll give the board a little workout and see if we can make that noise reappear. So we're back to the original configuration. The channel select is on lead, not clean, because clean was fine. We crank it up, not too bad, right? But in lead, there's automatically some noise there. Now I can turn up the gain, there's no increase. Now the gain's all the way down. Watch when I put my hand near it. Okay, so it is picking up noise, which you'd expect, it's a high gain amp. But now we're gonna take the old magic tweaker. Let's tap around on the board and see if there's any sensitive areas. I'm kind of hearing something here. If you watch a scope, you can see it. See that? I'm just flicking this little cap here. Looks like it's uh, C13. I can hear it. Hear it? It's like a little microphone in the amp. So that could be our problem, all right? The other thing, I'll zero in on this. I want to show you this board and show you a common problem with some of these new fangled circuit boards. Here we go. Here is the Bad Cat Cougar 50, right? I'm glad they put that there. I like that. Preamp board. Now, what I want to point out is this is a dual-sided circuit board. So you see all these traces up here? Well, there's a whole bunch of traces underneath too. And to make connections from this trace to the bottom traces, they use these little guys right here. See all those little guys? Look like little pinholes. They're here, they're here. They're all over the place over here. Those are vias. And good circuit boards, they have a little uh, bit of material. There's more of this copper material that flows through the via. But in cheaper boards, they actually melt solder from this side, hoping it makes good connection with the other side. And I've had a lot of problems with intermittent vias, which is what we may have going on here. But I still suspect this guy. Because he is, hear that? Like a little microphone. So first, I'll re-solder this. Then we'll check it. And if not, we're going to change the cap. 
So before I attempt to resolder C13, I wanted to show you these pads. See those pads under the cap? They're like dry. There's no solder there. Granted, it makes its connections underneath the board, so that may not be an issue. But the other thing is, if you look back here at this resistor, same condition. Now, this one's supposed to make connection on top of the board. <clears throat> it's dry, too. So that's not good. So I'm going to go around here, fix up a bunch of these connections, and hopefully that solves it. Here's another one over here. See the old 1K? That pad is a ground pad. I don't see much solder there, either. So, touch it up. See what we get. So I soldered this thing and touched up connections in the area, but still it remains very sensitive. Like a little microphone. So we'll change this cap out and see if we get lucky. So the little microphone cap, Mr. Microphonic, is out. I have a spray orange drop in its place. And then I got the bright idea to look at the tubes. Here's the 12AX7 that was in that spot. It's probably hard to see, but there's a little dark spot right here. And that kind of alarmed me. So I thought, okay, let's check the plate resistor. So 220K, there's my meter down there. She is wide open. So obviously the tube failed bake the resistor. So I'm going to swap that out. Let's see what we get then. Got the new resistor right in there. I'm on the clean channel. You see she's working. Go over here to the old dirty channel. Bring up the master. Bring down the gain. She's a working. That's what it was. Obviously the old tube took out the resistor which made that cap super sensitive. Anyway, she's good to go. I'm gonna give her a final test, but I think we got this one licked. Moral of the story, people. Number one, I'm running out of wine, so I really gotta make this quick. But, I should have listened to the customer, because he told me this amp worked until he replaced the tubes. This thing had old Chinese tubes in it. He put in some nice mullards, which is cool, but the problem came up after he changed those tubes. Had I listened, I probably would have thought, well, maybe it's related to those tubes being changed. I didn't listen, so as you saw, I had to kind of run around circles, but eventually found the culprit. Anyway, I hope this is good for you. It's always good for me. I'll see you again, D-Lab.